And today we're going to be taking a look at this new tube amplifier that I have built. Now, in my old videos, I showed you how to build some other tube amplifiers, and these tube amplifiers had some inherent flaws. Uh, the first flaw being that these old tube amplifiers used homemade vacuum tube sockets, which, unlike the ceramic vacuum tube sockets, were not as safe, and they were kind of sketchy. They let the vacuum tubes wiggle around too easily. So, another inherent flaw of my old amplifier was that the chassis was hot which meant that it had approximately a 200 volt potential to ground. Now this is bad because if you're holding your guitar and you're touching the strings of your guitar and those strings have a 200 volt potential to ground and you touch something that's grounded, then you're gonna get shocked and that's not gonna feel good. So in this design, I made some drastic changes to the power supply. Power supply of my new tube amplifier, I have grounded the neutral wire of the AC power line. I have also made sure to take a polarized plug for my tube amplifier because the wide spade is uh, what is known as neutral and the, and the little small one is known as hot. Now what I've done is I've grounded neutral and I've added a fuse from live to the switch. Now this fuse is on the back and it's rated at one amp so that way if anything shorts it won't catch fire and it will just blow the fuse. Now, another thing that I have changed in this new tube amplifier is that I have added a single diode from the end of the auto transformer to the actual vacuum tube circuit. Now, before I had a bridge rectifier, which meant that the chassis was hot in potential to ground 50% of the time. Now, by adding a diode instead of a bridge rectifier, that ensures that this ground is grounded 100% of the time. And the only thing that's going to be hot is anything connected to uh, these wires over here. Everything else in the schematic stays the same from my old tube amplifiers and my previous videos. And this makes sure that this whole circuit is much, much safer. Another small difference that I've made between the old and new tube amplifiers <clears throat> is that in this new tube amplifier, I have used this little neon light bulb to indicate this. Now I got all these potentiometers and audio jacks and switches and uh, lights from Radio Shack at a very cheap price because everything was 90% off. So the front panel looks a lot better and it looks a lot more professional with this light and all these other uh, components. Now another key difference is this vacuum tube. Now in my other amplifiers I used the 12AX7. From this amplifier I used a uh, 6P2N or something like that and it's a Russian equivalent of the 12AX7 and it works just the same except that it requires 6 volts instead of 12 volts like the 12AX7 does. Now I mounted all of these power transformers on the top of the vacuum tube amplifier because it looks cooler that way. I have the auto transformer right here that provides the high voltage B+, the output transformer, and the filament transformer. Flip around this tube amplifier and look on the back, we can see that these are all the electronic components inside. As you can see, there's a lot of holes where the wires from all the transformers are coming in. So we also have to have a dropper resistor right here that um, takes the higher voltage from the transformer, the filament transformer. And because of the current flowing through it for the two vacuum tubes, it lowers the voltage to the required 6.3 volts that tube filaments need. We, here we have an old um, inductive choke that makes sure that it takes out lots of the noise from the line. We also have some other important components, such as these ceramic um, tube sockets that were bolted in place. This smaller one, because it was meant to solder onto a circuit board, had to use a piece of plexiglass to hold it to the frame. But this is the completed tube amp circuit of the inside. So let's hear what it sounds like when we turn it on. First, we're going to put on the lid, which is the bottom part of the CD drive. I, if I didn't mention this before, this entire tube amp chassis was made using an old CD drive. The use of a CD drive for the chassis of this tube amp makes it so that way I am recycling old computer parts, which helps with the environment. And it is also very functional because it provides an all-metal chassis that actually is very easy to drill in 
and it holds very well. So after I finish putting these new screws in, we'll test this thing out. Now that the base plate is all on, we can plug in our tube, starting with the 6P2N and the 6V6 power amplifier tube. And we can plug this thing in and hear it work. The speaker that is used with this amplifier is a 2 ohm car speaker. To hear it work, I can flip the switch, and as you can see, the little light comes on, and it looks pretty good. Then, after, while it's warming up, we can plug in a quarter inch audio jack. And as you can hear, there's no sound coming from the speaker right now, but when I touch the end of the audio cord, you can hear a 60 hertz hum. That slight hum is because um, my body is acting as an antenna to pick up the 60 hertz hum from everywhere around me. Now that you've heard what that tube amplifier sounds like, when it is just being used as an antenna to pick up the 60 hertz hum, let's put some knobs on it and put a little fan on it to cool down one of the power transformers, and then we can hear what it sounds like on an actual guitar. This video is a clip of my friend who I'm selling this guitar amplifier to and he is playing uh, a very good song on this tube amplifier and it is hooked up to his speaker cabinet which I have wired to be two ohms to match the impedance of the output of my vacuum tube amplifier. So here's that clip. This is the tube amp with the guitar going straight into it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time. In my next video, I'm going to be showing you what happens when you put highlighters in a microwave. It'll be pretty cool looking, so stay tuned for that.